This time of year, there are so many ideas out there about how to set good resolutions and get the most out of the next year that all of the advice can start to kind of blur together. Particularly when it comes to productivity, suggestions range from approaches to time management to ergonomics and cover most everything in between. I'm going to simplify that down to a couple of key ideas here. Across the many books and articles on the subject that I've read, the studies I've looked at, and the truly embarrassing volume of YouTube videos I've watched, I've found a few consistent suggestions. First, narrow your focus. There are so many things that compete for our attention, so it's no surprise that staying focused is one of the largest challenges that we often face. Speaking personally, I can't tell you how many times I've entered a day with what felt like a hundred things to do, and yet because I had so many things to do, I actually ended up getting fewer of them done. I just kept bouncing from one thing to the other without committing to doing a single thing more effectively. A lot of research shows that multitasking has a really negative impact on both productivity and how accurate we are while we're working. When you're working, one way to narrow focus is by cutting out distractions by using applications that block social media websites, putting our phone in another room, I do that one all the time, or maybe not checking your email while you're working on a specific task. And the same thing can work with setting resolutions or goals for the next year altogether. It's tempting to have a goal for everything, but there's some evidence that the more goals a person sets, the fewer they actually end up accomplishing. Second, identify clear short, long, and medium-term goals. Whether it's being productive on a day-to-day -day basis or getting more of what you want out of the year to come, true productivity doesn't just mean making a lot of things. It means making more of what matters to you. We need to get really clear about what we really care about, and that naturally informs what our goals end up being. Most people tend to set goals that are either right in front of them or very far away, focusing really narrowly on what they must get done in a single day or on where they want to be in three or four years. Medium-term goals, say what you want to commit to doing every day or week for several months, gives us attainable achievements to shoot for, while also really clarifying what we should be focusing on during any given day. Third, focus on what you can control. Lots of people make the mistake of setting goals or resolutions or focusing on tasks more broadly where they're not really in control of what happens or where they're tacitly giving all of the power to someone or something else. And this can be really demotivating. To use a few examples of goals related to work, I want to get promoted is a really common goal, but it's usually not entirely in your control. On the other hand, something like, I want to start doing work I love, is a really great sentiment. It's like a great big picture thing to identify in your life as a need for you, but it's not something that just magically appears, right? It happens because you put in specific efforts that move you closer to that objective. On the other hand, we can usually control whether we show up on time or consistently put effort into something we care about on a day-to-day -day basis. So setting goals around that is generally more useful. When we focus on our own effort, a few things happen. First, we move into agency. We look at ourselves rather than getting all caught up in external forces. Second, because we're focusing more on what we're doing day to day, we're more likely to experience little wins. These small wins add up to more self-confidence over time. Fourth, break your challenges into manageable chunks. Just as we can break our goals into short, medium, and long term to make them feel both clearer and more attainable, we can break our tasks, and really any of the challenges we face along the way, into more manageable chunks. It's a lot easier to approach writing a sentence, or a paragraph, or a chapter, than it is to approach writing a whole book. Fifth, if you struggle with procrastination or other forms of avoidance, try what's known as escalating commitment. A version of this is the five minute rule where you commit to just five minutes of something you're not really looking forward to. To give one example, if improving your physical health means buying a gym membership and committing to driving 20 to 30 minutes each way, four days a week for the foreseeable future, till the end of time, heat death of the universe, well, yeah, that's a really big commitment and it's not going to sound very appealing to you. But we can commit to five minutes of almost anything, and from there you'll often find that you end up doing 20 or 30 rather than five because inertia is a hell of a drug. Finally, experience fulfillment along the way. This might sound a bit like cheating, but it reflects the research I cited earlier. 
Even if we're shooting for medium and long-term goals that would truly fulfill us, if we're worn down and burned out on a day-to-day -day basis, it's unlikely that we're going to stick in the game long enough to actually get where we want to go. When things get tough, and they usually do, remind yourself of those longer-term goals and how great it'll be when you get there. Switch over to tasks that you find more pleasant if possible. Take a few mental health breaks. And when good things do happen, really pause for a moment and give yourself both the opportunity and frankly the permission to experience authentic happiness along the way. Just because you haven't gotten all of the way there quite yet doesn't mean you aren't allowed to feel good about yourself. So, hope you found this helpful. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. It really helps me out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Not bad.